Welcome again to another episode of our broadcast, the Powerhouse Deliverance broadcast. And this is your presenter, Dr. Uzo. Today we want to talk about how to retain and maintain our deliverance. Very important. Last time I mentioned a phrase that is easy to obtain than to maintain. Also, it's easy to do deliverance. It's easy to obtain deliverance. Casting out demons, removing burdens, curses, covenant, and eliminating addiction through deliverance is the easy part. The difficult part is to retain and maintain your deliverance, what I call follow-up. Most deliverance sessions or most deliverance benefits and gain are lost during follow-up. Yes, a lot of times we tell people to go and see no more, but that's not all the story. That's not the full gist. The full gist today, I want to read from Matthew. Matthew 11, 43. This is the rule rather than the exception. Yes, I've seen some permanent deliverance sessions because when God delivers, he delivers effectively, effectually, completely. God is perfect. Everything he does is perfect. However, human nature is not. And that's why we're going to read this because remember the three worst enemy of the believer. The flesh, the world, and the enemy, the devil. So what happened is that we're going to see how the enemy manipulated these two against us to his advantage. And we have to be wise. And let me read from Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. And he says, and this is from the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when it is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in, in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Child of God, you discover that the enemy trying to come back after you've been disconnected, disengaged, dismantled, destroyed, or eliminated the devil from that person, the enemy will always attempt to come back. Actually, this is the rule rather than the exception. And after deliverance, you have to explain to people the importance of remaining, retaining, sustaining the deliverance. If you don't do that, People will keep on running around for one deliverance session or the other. First of all, the Lord cured the man, and then he saw him later in the temple. The man was jumping up and down, and the Lord said, Look, go and tell what has happened to you. Go give testimony, but go and sin no more, else worse thing happened to you. It then means that after your deliverance, if you keep on sinning, if you keep on going back to the same trigger, to the same loophole, to the same string, to the same bondage or snare that the enemy has used to link you up to himself, then the situation worsens again because the demons come right back because of open door, because of loophole, because of crack in your armor. And remember the scripture says, whosoever breaketh the hedge, a serpent will bite. It doesn't matter who. So the key is to avoid sin, avoid, especially I think 
from experience, uh, let, let me say this from experience, the things, the, the specific things that really open doors from the enemy are things like anger, lust, and then another thing that opens up, you know, door for the enemy also is unforgiveness, really. These three sins, from my experience, deliverance experience, are very, very paramount. It doesn't mean that other sins are, are less, but these are the ones that give it very easy access, very easy legal ground, and as such, legal right to the enemy to re oppress or re attack or counter attack or come right back, bringing other demons with them. Now, let's go to the scripture here and interpret this scripture because this scripture is actually from our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how this demon left, whether he left because of deliverance section or he left during worship or in the dream because God can give you deliverance in different ways, in different manner, in different shape, in different form, through different avenues. Deliverance is like healing, is the children's bread. God can heal through the laying on of hands. God can heal through deliverance. In other words, when the demon goes away, healing is accelerated. The healing happens. I've seen also healing come through prayer, deliverance prayer. I've seen healing come through glory. In other words, in an environment that is glory of God, the presence of God, supercharged with the power of God, no demon can stay. They just leave. I've also seen demons leave during worship. We notice this even in the Old Testament. When, the, when King David, at uh, that time he wasn't the king yet, but when he was a, as a musician, when he was praying, playing praise and worship to Paul or Saul, King Saul, the demons left. That was one of the only account we had in the Old Testament when it comes to deliverance because that time Jesus has not come uh, in the flesh. So music is a very powerful instrument of deliverance. In fact, worship. Holy communion. I've seen people receive holy communion and the enemy is terminated because everything boils back to redemption. The blood and the broken body, which is the word, which is a source of our deliverance. So both, both of them are means of deliverance. So I'm saying this to say that we can get our deliverance in a variety of way of course including the prophetic deliverance which I talk so much about now here the Lord is making us understand that it doesn't matter how you get the deliverance or how the demon left it was not an issue that is not important. The important thing here is that if you don't maintain and retain the deliverance through follow-up, the enemy comes right back. So if he comes right back, then we have to guard against it. We have to close the loopholes, want to close the hedge, want to, you know, block the entry point or access point of the enemy from coming back with his colleagues and cohorts. Now, what do we do? Number one thing is to be born again. There's no way I don't even do deliverance to people who are not saved, who do not belong to God. Well, you may argue that, well, everybody is a child of God. No, no, the Bible did not say that. Everybody is a creature of God. Everybody was made by God. But God gave us opportunity to accept him back, according to John 1, 12. As many as have received him, to them gave you power to become children of God, even to them that believe in his name. You have to be born again. You have to, you know, confess your sins accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior based on his finished work on the cross of Calvary because of your faith in the blood and the broken body. When you are express faith in that, not only have you repented, but you also have to be converted. In other words, you have to walk in your repentance. You walk, have to walk in the light of the, your testimony. You have to forsake sin. The Bible said, whosoever confesseth and forsaketh in sin will obtain mercy. You have to make a U-turn, a turnaround. You know, so a 360 degree turnaround. You don't, there's no tolerance for sin. Actually, is an entry point to so many things. So you have to close avenue for sin. He, for instance, if somebody is addicted to women and then you've been delivered and each time spirit of loss is still there, you keep on going back. Even if there's no spirit of loss, once you go back and didn't cut off some of these sources or these areas that are tempting, 
the enemy brings his colleagues right back. The, the devil comes back. And that thing is that you have to stay in the word. You have to stay in the word of God because the word of God is not just the source of our deliverance. It's also the source of maintaining our deliverance. The word of God is our food. It's our spiritual food. The word of God is our light. The word of God is our life. The word of God is our covenant. It's a word of covenant. It's a word of victory. It's a word of breakthrough. It's a word of turnaround. It's a word of uh, triumph. Because whosoever is born of God overcometh the word. And this is the victory that overcometh the word, even our faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word. Faith in God. Because this word of faith has to be in you. The Bible said the word is nigh thee. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and will believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I say, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, for with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that salvation has to be maintained by confession. And also faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. In other words, not just hearing, but doing. But when you hear, you have to understand. Because if you don't understand, you cannot apply anything you don't understand. You cannot enjoy anything you don't understand. You cannot walk in the freedom of anything. In fact, anything you don't understand masters you. And your understanding makes you a standing in your undertaking. So if you understand that you have to really stay in the world and also serve God, obey God, Obedience is very, very important. If you obey God, not just running away from sin, but you have to obey what God has said. You know, I'm not talking about walking away from sin, but also, you have to also walk towards God. You also have, know how to hear God. You know how to, you know, obey God. And then you have to be a member of a church. Don't be a freelancer. Because what I found out is that a lot of people that run around from one deliverance session or the other don't even have a church home. Every Christian is supposed to have a church home and be subject to a pastor. You can only blossom where you're planted. You have to have a place to receive receive your spiritual food and pay your tithe and give your offering and worship with other brothers and sisters. You know, fellowship is very, very important. I'm not just talking about membership. I'm talking about fellowship and also discipleship. Be a student of the Bible is the source of everything. The Bible study, Bible questions, and also memorize the scripture. This is how Jesus Christ defeated the enemy. Anytime the enemy tempted him, he kept on saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. Why? Because he read it, because he knew it, because he understood it, because he applied it into his life. He memorized it. It was part of him. It was part of his, you know, life. He chewed it. He digested it. The word was part of the Lord. So because of that, it's easy to word of the devil. Because see, when you take the word in, it's the food of your spirit. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. This is living, Christian living, Christian victory, you know, wisdom, direction, discretion. If you really want to live a solid Christian life, the word is mandatory. It's not an option. Now, another thing again is that you have to understand how to take Holy Communion, especially if you are dealing with altars. You have to take Holy Communion periodically. Periodically. It helps you. It works off the enemy. It takes us back to the cross, back to the blood, back to the broken body and the life of Jesus Christ. When you take Holy Communion, you develop Jesus consciousness. Christ's life becomes yours. Remember, he told us that we should do this in remembrance of him. And as long as we do him, we remember the Lord's death and resurrection. And then remember, when you keep on taking Holy Communion, and also worship. Worship is very, very important. There are things you do, the enemy will leave you alone. When you're a true worshiper, who worship God in spirit and in truth continuously, perpetually. I've never seen a worshiper that lack anything. I've seen people, they know how to praise God. They know how to do thanksgiving. They know how to give testimony, but they don't understand worship because worship is about glory. And worship is the reason why we are created. It's the reason for our existence. Worship is the shortest distance between you and your breakthrough, between you and your victory. We cannot emphasize worship enough. And that's how to minister to the Lord very, very 
very important because the Holy Ghost is not just in you. The Holy Ghost is around you. The Holy Ghost is upon you. So the Holy Ghost, when you worship, the Holy Ghost comes to the scene. And it's the Holy Ghost that help us overcome sin, that help us maintain our deliverance, but help us live like Christ, have the Christ nature, have the Christ life. So these are the ways to maintain and retain your deliverance. And also your thought life is very, very important because, you see, we can pray once in a while. You know, we mentioned prayer, so, so I say continuous prayer. We can't do without prayer. You know, I, I assume that. But also, if you noticed, if you keep on not just uh, 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 worshiping or praying, but if you if you if you if you keep on fellowshipping, keep on, you know, being around believers continuously, you know. As a child of God, obeying God, obeying His voice, doing what is pleasant inside, the enemy cannot attack you because the Holy Ghost will help you. Everything you do, praying, fasting, communion, worship, they are all things that attract the Holy Ghost into your life because we can't, this, we can't live this life by our power. By strength shall no man prevail. We can't live it by our strength. We cannot live it by our human way power. It, can, it simply cannot happen. We can't even argue with the enemy and win without Jesus Christ. And the Holy Ghost is the one that came to introduce Jesus Christ, that came to make us live the Christ life, that make actually is the single most important key to victory. So when you have the Holy Ghost, you have everything. That's why God said, stay tarry in Jerusalem till you receive the endowment of power from on high. So this is the power to live as a child of God. The power of the Holy Ghost. Remember, the Holy Ghost is not just a person. It's a power. It's a presence. It's a purpose. And it's the one that makes it all happen. It's the one. All these factors are mentioned. That's why I went back to the Holy Ghost. It's the one that coordinates it. It's the one that makes you live in victory total victory. So you have to rely and depend on the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So this is how to maintain and retain your deliverance and then if you go back to the scripture, you discover that something here is amazing. Why, what, what, what he told us here in the scripture. He said the enemy will go back you know, and bring other demons with him. So if you come back to the house, could you imagine a human being, the devil is calling his house, the temple of the Holy Ghost, the devil is calling his own house. It then means that a demon without a body is restless, cannot perform the way or their diabolical work, and also they need reinforcement. So the enemy needs people's body for stability, for shelter, and to do their evil diabolical work. So you can deny them all this by feeding yourself in the word and then doing exactly these six, seven items I mentioned. Praise, you, praise God. We'll come back again. Remember, this is our telecast. Don't forget to subscribe to our videos if you, if, if you like us. Subscribe to our videos. And then remember, we always have deliverance every Wednesday. 3.30 to 6.30. PM 3565 Oxter Road, Merita, Georgia 30008. Praise God. See you next time. Bye bye.